Welcome back to another episode of Sound 101. As always, with me is Dee Dee Steve. Hey. Today, Andrew and I are going to be checking out a bunch of different depictions of sound recording in movies and assessing whether or not they're legit or just kind of Hollywood movie magic. If they're phony. So, first clip, what do you got? So, this is our first clip. We've got Modern Romance. Albert Brooks plays a film editor who's trying to save his movie. Okay, so he's gonna do Foley for his own movie. I'm a snake, I'm a snake, I'm a go, go, go! That looked good. That's about as good as I did, I think. <laughs> it did look like you. <laughs> it looked very much like spasmatic me good. trying to do Foley. Let's see that back, okay? Let's see that back. Take a look at it. All right. As always, it's always that first pass and you're done, there right? You go. It's that Nailed easy. It. Nailed it on your first try. Wow. Realistic? Well, I don't think necessarily. I think the conceptually it's there, but you know, that would have been two passes, right? right. You did you did a footsteps pass, then you did a props pass. So yep. he did the the footsteps with the prop in his hand. That would have been two things. So on a technicality, it is unrealistic, but conceptually potentially realistic. Yeah, so, so Maybe, oh, yeah, man. yeah, kind of. Next scene. Okay, this is one of my favorites. Sound mixer is called airplane. And no one hears the airplane. Listen. What to? Aircraft. Where? Have we cut or what? What, what do you mean, aircraft? Like big iron bird from great land in sky. An aircraft. What bloody aircraft? Sorry, Dennis, cut. Shh. Very realistic, actually. If you have amplified listening equipment, you can hear things that no one else can, which means the guys in post-production can also hear that stuff. That's what really does happen. And the sound mixer is one of the only other people on set who should be talking at a level of call and cut, right? Yeah, and this also is kind of an iffy statement to make too, because you can sometimes be doing a scene and they're like, we don't care. Uh, we know there's going to be a plane, we're just going to ADR the scene anyway, you're doing reference track, don't call cut. And then there are times where the director's like, if you hear something, we do not have the budget in post, call cut, you're going to save our movie because we do not have time. So, realistic? Yeah. All right. Very realistic. Next scene. This is the conversation, classic Coppola film. He has a couple of different recordings of a conversation. There's interference, there's busted signals and everything, so he's trying to figure out what was said in this pivotal little bit that he doesn't have a clean recording of. What could he even possibly be doing with this little capacitor machine? I don't know. Um, it's got a nine volt battery and some capacitors and like little, there it is, like, oh, I got it. We discovered what it is. It's like a hardware version of like Isotope RX. I have no idea what this thing could be. I'm guessing it's fake. Technology from that time period, I don't think could have done that. Drums, you know, and musical instruments are, are full frequency kind of things. Mm -hmm. So to try to like get rid of all those frequencies and just have the human voice left over, which is like this little sliver in the frequency spectrum, I don't think it would have been possible back then. Kill us if you got the chance. But based on basic knowledge of this, it's a thumbs down for me. I'm gonna give it a, I don't, I don't even know what he's doing. So I don't mind, who am I to say it? If you know, please let us, uh, let us know in the comments below what Gene Hackman is doing in the conversation to uh, discover that hidden audio clip. This is Toast of London. He's a voiceover actor who is trying to make it and the client is the British Navy. Fire the nuclear weapons. Stephen, that was good. But you think you could give it another try, this time say it in a less alarming way? Less alarming? I've just given the order to fire the nuclear weapons. I've just unleashed Armageddon. Yes, but the feeling here is that you could do it in a way which is a little less dramatic. It's just a little bit over the top at the moment. Have fun with it. Yeah, that's actually realistic. Clients will give you terrible, terrible advice in the middle of your movie or in the middle of your take because they think this is what their brand needs. Okay, then so you get this. 
Fire the nuclear weapons. Is it realistic to have the clients in the booth with you? Yes, that's okay. very realistic. So definitely mm. a too many cooks situation. All the time. So yeah, thumbs up. Next up, we have Brian De Palma's Blowout. In this scene, John Travolta is, he's just kind of flexing his sound thing. He's got this long shotgun and he is like sniping sounds. So that's a, I think that's a Nagra. So that's real tool, real microphone. All this is real, none of this props. I think the question would come in in terms of clarity of audio recording and the range at which he's getting these sounds. Yeah, and we're about to see, this is something terrible. Betsy. I don't want to stay here anymore, let's go. Yeah. What is he doing? I don't know. This is where you get, like when we're at trade shows and people come up, oh, what's the range of this microphone? And I'm like, it's 18 inches. And they're always like disappointed. And I feel like I blame John Travolta. It would have to be like a parab dish. Like yeah. what you see on the sides of football fields, big giant three foot kind of dish, hold it up, little bitty microphone, focuses all the audio right into that little point. That would do it, but you wouldn't get the same frequency response rate. So it's a cool effect. It's a cool effect, uh, but it's that's that. It's a Hollywood effect. So realistic, mm. no, that's a no. no. Shotgun microphones are not binoculars for sound. No. This is from the movie Naked Gun. The queen is going to be coming to visit uh, Los Angeles, as she often does. So he is lobbed up. You can see his lapel on his jacket. Okay. Have a stake in seeing that this portion of the Queen's He American goes to the bathroom. And yes, yes, it's about to happen. Yes. Indeed, it is. Literal potty humor. Okay, uh, so this could this happens on set. This happens actually. Uh, there's a reason why there's mute switches. Right. Um, so you can mute yourself when you go to the bathroom, or what you'll do is you'll take it off to go to the bathroom. But the idea that someone leaves their mic on and then goes to the bathroom, very realistic. It happens. Good job, okay. Naked Gun. Good job. Okay, here is a great movie, Living in Oblivion. Steve Buscemi. I still have to record room tone. I'll need 30 seconds of silence. How do you feel about this depiction okay, of an okay, audio right, guy? He's got a hat. Yeah, he's, he's got, got the a, hat. He's calling for room tone. He's goatee. angry. Yeah. Goatee. Speed. And I love Mike's how he's booming a dynamic microphone. No, I was say, what is that? <laughs> it's a dynamic Jesus. microphone. You, that's room not tone. realistic. Rolling. And they just sit there. Okay, so Living in Oblivion checks out. Checks out. I mean, this is other, other than, than the microphone. Other than the dynamic microphone on the boom pole, yeah, this is very realistic. This is a thumbs up. Thumbs up. In this scene, Tom Cruise is doing his craziest stunt, and they have all these parameters in the room. They have to keep under a certain temperature, and they have to keep under a certain decibel level. Right from the ceiling, hanging, about to insert a floppy desk. Okay. There it is. Oh, it's up in the yellow. The magical, mythical yellow sound. If anything, the modem and chunking along and the fan sure. noise of this computer yeah. has got to be louder than a floppy desk. And there's no actual decibel level on there. It's just three, it's just three colors, green, orange and red. Okay, so no, no. I think we can rule it out. Yeah, not Exciting, realistic. but no, no. This is a Foley scene from Barbarian Sound Studio. Okay. Some sort of vegetable that he is actually stabbing. Gigantic Brussels sprout. Oh, yeah, nut knife stuck in it. <laughs> Very realistic. Comes off a little C-stand there. Yeah, and we've seen video people actually use vegetables for Foley. This is... Yeah, and he's got the microphones placed right up on it. He had it suspended, which I kind of like because he doesn't have, like, the, the table noise. He's getting just that isolated sound. Really a good idea. Yeah. And he's got a whole garden's worth of lettuce there. Yeah, he's about to commit a lot of murder. 
Okay. Yeah. yeah. Checks out. Checks out. It's good. So I think overall we've kind of figured out that most of them are accurate to a degree. Yeah. Most of it we could easily say yes or maybe to. The ones that were like the no's, I think were the most obvious no's, but it's only obvious to us. Sure. And a lot of them being conceptually accurate, but just maybe the equipment or something very specific about it is a little bit off. Yeah. And I think the ones that were just completely like no's, that were easy as obvious no's, were the ones that required a suspense of disbelief already for the rest of the plot. Mm -hmm. So yeah, not bad Hollywood, good job. It's almost like you guys have a consultant on your set. Hey, if you liked this video, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe on all social media platforms. Uh, hit that bell for notifications so you can get more videos like this. We post every single Monday. I'm Andrew from DD Microphones. He's DD Steve. Later. Thanks for watching.